You crack open your egg among hundreds of sisters in a warm, dark chamber deep underground. Huh? You're not just any ant. You're born with a silver spoon in your mandibles. You're destined to be royalty. Hello. Which sounds great until you realize what that actually means in the ant world. Hmm. It's not all garden parties and tiny crowns. Unlike your worker sisters who pop out ready to start their 9 to 5 jobs, you emerge as a princess with wings. Yes, wings. Yeah. But don't get too excited. They're basically your one-way ticket to the most dangerous blind date in history. You're bigger than your sisters with a bulkier thorax packed with flight muscles and enough fat reserves to make a bear jealous. <laughs> Think of it as nature's version of apocalypse prepping, because trust me, you're going to need it. Your first few weeks are spent being waited on by worker ants who stuff you with food like an Italian grandmother. They're preparing you for your big debut, the nuptial flight. It's like The Bachelor meets American Ninja Warrior, except instead of a rose ceremony, nom, nom, nom. you might get eaten by a bird. You wait in the nest, growing stronger each day until the perfect conditions arrive. Warm, humid air, usually after rain. That's nature's way of saying, it's showtime. When the signal comes, you and your fellow princesses emerge from the nest along with male ants from other colonies. The males, by the way, are basically flying sperm delivery systems with an expiration date of about one week. Talk about pressure. You take flight in what looks like a massive ant party in the sky. Birds swoop through the swarm like kids at a pinata party, but you dodge and weave, determined not to become a feathered friend's snack. Mid-flight, you attract several male suitors. They're not exactly Prince Charming, more like Prince in a hurry because their biological clock is ticking faster than a time bomb. You mate with multiple males in midair, storing all their sperm in a special organ called a spermatheca. Mm. This sperm has to last you your entire life. We're talking up to 30 years. It's like extreme couponing, but with genetic material. Once you've collected enough sperm, around 250 million, because why settle? You drop to the ground and immediately start ripping off your own wings. Now comes the hard part. You need to dig yourself a tiny chamber in the soil. Your starter home. No real estate agent. No mortgage. Just you and your mandibles digging until you've carved out a cozy little space. Once inside, you seal yourself in. Welcome to the next phase of your life. Solitary confinement. In your underground chamber, you start laying your first eggs. These will become your worker daughters, your first tiny workforce. But here's the catch. You can't leave to get food. Remember those fat reserves you stored up? That's all you've got to survive on while raising your first batch of workers. Huh? Yes, you read that right. Those beautiful wings you were so proud of? They're now about as useful as a chocolate teapot. You literally tear them off yourself, using them as fertilizer for your first batch of eggs. You even digest your wing muscles for extra nutrients. It's basically the ant version of surviving on your own body fat while running a daycare. You tend to these first eggs like they're made of gold, cleaning them constantly to prevent mold. When they hatch into larvae, you feed them with special eggs you lay just for food. Aww. Yes, you're feeding your babies their potential siblings. Nature's weird like that. These larvae eventually pupate and emerge as your first workers, but they're tiny. Like, really tiny. They're the ant equivalent of premature babies because you didn't have proper nutrition while raising them. But once these first workers mature, things start looking up. They dig their way out of the chamber, and suddenly you've got help. They forage for food, expand the nest, and take care of your next batch of eggs. Finally, you can focus on your true calling, being an egg-laying machine. You can lay up to 1,500 eggs per day during peak season. That's one egg every minute, making human labor look like a casual Sunday stroll. Your colony grows exponentially, but don't break out the champagne just yet. Your tiny workers have to navigate a world that's basically a giant death trap. Rival colonies send raiders to steal your brood. Parasitic wasps try to inject their eggs into your workers. No. And occasionally some workers get funny ideas about laying their own eggs. You have to release special pheromones to keep them in line. When they do try to sneak their eggs past you, Come on, man. your loyal workers turn into tiny police officers destroying any eggs that aren't yours. Workers build new chambers, tend to the brood, and bring you food. Huh? Mm, yummy. You're now basically a living vending machine, pumping out eggs of different types based on the colony's needs. Want workers? Regular fertilized eggs. Need males? Unfertilized eggs. Time for new queens? Special fertilized eggs with extra royal jelly. You control all of this by choosing when to use that stored sperm from your nuptial flight. Oh yeah. Years pass, and your colony becomes a bustling metropolis. Thousands of workers scurry about, maintaining temperature and humidity, fighting off invaders, and keeping you well fed. You're now surrounded by royal attendants who feed you, clean you, and carry away your eggs. It's like having a full-time spa staff, except you can never leave the spa, ever. Your body has changed dramatically. Your abdomen is now enormously swollen with eggs, making you look like a tiny sausage with legs. You can barely move, but that's fine. Your job is to stay put and keep laying eggs. Your workers regulate everything about your environment, from temperature to humidity, 
treating you like a combination queen and egg-laying supercomputer. This is the mother ant royalty, where success means creating your own replacements, and loyalty lasts exactly as long as your egg-laying ability. At least human monarchs get to retire to a nice castle somewhere. You? You get to watch the next generation literally grow up around you while your own body slowly shuts down. Now that's what you call succession planning. But here's the thing. While you're stuck in your underground chamber playing living vending machine, your colony is part of something much bigger. You are the most successful species on Earth, a member of a society that's mastered sustainable agriculture, universal health care, and sophisticated communication millions of years before humans figured out how to make fire. Your workers farm fungi in carefully maintained gardens, tend to aphid herds like tiny shepherds, and run a healthcare system that would make any nation jealous, identifying infected colony members and treating them with antimicrobial secretions before diseases can spread. Your colony even masters the art of democracy without anyone ever casting a vote. When it's time to relocate, scouts explore potential new nest sites and recruit others to inspect them. Through a complex dance of pheromone trails and physical interactions, thousands of individuals reach consensus without a single committee meeting or PowerPoint presentation. Hmm. It's like running a country where everyone actually agrees on things. Imagine that. And let's talk about your construction crews. While humans pat themselves on the back for building skyscrapers, your workers are engineering climate-controlled structures with sophisticated ventilation systems using nothing but dirt and tiny mandibles. They create living bridges with their own bodies to cross gaps, form rafts to survive floods, and build pressure-regulated chambers that would make NASA engineers jealous. All of this without a single architectural degree or building permit. Hmm. Your colony achieves all this through swarm intelligence. No middle management requirements. Required. Each worker knows their role and performs it perfectly, creating a superorganism that's greater than the sum of its parts. While human societies debate the merits of different political systems, your colony hums along with the efficiency of a well-oiled machine powered by nothing more than instinct and pheromones. It's like running a Fortune 500 company where every employee actually knows what they're doing and nobody wastes time in meetings talking about synergy. As you age, your egg-laying capacity gradually decreases. The sperm you stored decades ago starts running low. Turns out even 250 million isn't infinite. Your workers still care for you but you notice them getting antsy. They're starting to raise new queens, preparing for your eventual replacement. It's like watching your retirement party being planned while you're still at work. After two or three decades, if you're lucky, your reign comes to an end. Your egg laying slows to a trickle and finally stops. The colony you built from scratch, the empire you created from nothing but your own body fat and determination will soon be led by a new queen. You've laid millions of eggs, built a society from scratch, and never once seen the sun again after your nuptial flight. As you feel your strength fading, worker ants still tend to you, programmed by evolution to care for their mother until the end. Your legacy lives on in the complex network of tunnels and chambers you'll never see, in the thousands of workers still following the chemical trails you helped establish, and in the new queens who will soon take flight to start the cycle all over again. In the end, you've lived the ultimate paradox, a life of supreme importance spent in perpetual confinement, a royal ruler who's really more of a prisoner, a mother to millions who never really got to know any of her children. But that's life as a queen ant. It's not about the glamour or the glory. It's about keeping the colony going, one egg at a time, until the very end. <laughs>